the truth. So, again, not too sure if you guys have heard about this before, but violence against elderly Asian Americans in the Bay Area is skyrocketing. So this was happened on the, well, this article was made on the 12th of February, earlier this year. And apparently there's been a massive increase of violence towards the elderly Asian American community by a certain group of people, which I'm pretty certain you may know who they are. I'll, I'll definitely get to that in just a short second. Um, in March, when much of the nation shut down in response to the coronavirus landing on American shores, the Anti-Defamation League, ADL, what a surprise, estimated that there were at least 57 instances of anti-Asian harassment and violence nationwide. And in recent weeks, the, the string of violence and anti-Asian sentiment has reached another breaking point, one that has disproportionately targeted vulnerable Asian se seniors in the Bay Area. A fatal attack on an 84-year-old Thai man in San Francisco, if uh, that's going to be in, in, in the video, actually, which we'll just, I'll just show you guys right now. So, again, it's, it's, it's partly to do with what's been talked about here with that article, but let's have a look at that just now, see from here. So... Anyway, let's have a look at this. Three, two, one, go. Authorities in the Bay Area here in California say they've seen an uptick in recent weeks in violent attacks against Asian Americans. It's adding to the already large number of incidents since the pandemic hit the U.S. almost a year ago. And it's prompting law enforcement to take some new action. And we want to warn you, some of the video we're about to show is quite disturbing. A string of violent attacks against elderly Asian Americans has law enforcement on alert. This surveillance video capturing an alleged assailant in California violently shoving an 84-year-old Thai American man to the ground. He died of his injuries days later. Authorities say it's not currently being prosecuted as a hate crime and the suspect has pleaded not guilty. A 91-year-old man was pushed over in Oakland's Chinatown. The motivation has not yet been determined. In a 12-day period, there were 18 incidents of violence committed against Asian individuals, many of whom were seniors. The spike in violence forcing the Alameda County District Attorney to form a special response unit. Hollywood stars like Daniel Day Kim and Daniel Wu are also speaking out, using their fame to raise awareness and donate funds to organizations that fight hate. We're here for attention to the situation and address the issue. We need to do more as Asian Americans to voice our concerns and speak up, and we also cannot allow ourselves to be silenced. Advocates say these attacks became more prevalent after former President Trump began routinely using racist language to describe the pandemic. The China virus, or I like the plague from China. A UN report found there were more than 1,800 racist incidents against Asian Americans from March to May of last year. After taking office, President Biden last month signing an executive order with new Justice Department guidance on how to specifically report anti-Asian hate incidents. I'm directing federal agencies to combat resurgence of xenophobia, particularly against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. What else needs to be done beyond this executive order? A lot of a sense around education so that we don't see Asian Americans as foreigners. We don't see them as the other. Does this get better in your view? All of us galvanizing together, creating allyship, and just recognizing these issues within our own country is a step forward. We got to keep hopeful. Now, as you can imagine, these attacks, along with others and all of the attention on social media now, have raised the fear and anxiety levels in Chinatowns across the country. The Alameda County District Attorney tells me the Bay Area will see increased police presence this weekend for that important Lunar New Year celebration. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite uh, that's great. So, yeah, of course, uh, there's like a rise of violence towards Asian community people in, in the Bay Area, in California. And I want you all to take a good hard guess as to what that group of people or who, who exactly those groups of people are. I can also see in the chat <laughs> that uh, you all have a rough idea on who exactly is behind all of these attacks. So, so uh, a lot of people are saying uh, the joggers, of course, which, of course, 
what an absolute surprise! Because so, this, I, I had a look at, into this, these articles, uh, and also watched that video earlier on, and I was just thinking, right? So let me get this straight: in the Bay Area, in California, or, or San Francisco, or wherever it may be, there was a there was a rise of violence towards elderly Asian Americans. The perpetrators of these attacks are from black people, probably black men. And the the people who are more res- and and the, and, the, and the mainstream media really wants you to believe that the main people responsible for these attacks is the Trump rhetoric, despite the fact Trump is no longer president and Biden is in office as the forty sixth president of the United States. No, that doesn't matter. It's all because of the. The ongoing Trump rhetoric from uh, from the past four years, <laughs> that's what's causing these black people to attack these Asian Americans. Like, just get the fuck out. And I love, and I, by the way, I love, love the fact that these attacks happen. The people, you know, the black, you know, the, the joggers arrested for these crimes, n- not, not a hate crime, n- not come back as a, as a hate crime whatsoever, which I love that because... We all know exactly what would have happened if if the perpetrators of these attacks, which look, these attacks are horrible. Don't get me wrong on that, right? Well, let's all be brutally honest here. If it was a group of white people committing these acts towards the Asian Americans, you would be guaranteed fucking teed that they would be looked as hate crimes. But because the people committing these crimes are not white, then it won't be looked as a hate crime. One absolute surprise. So, because of these, if I wonder if, if there was, I did see something with this article here, the Filipino man. Uh, the issue has also been pushed into the national spotlight as celebrities are oh, going over that just now. So I would imagine that the, the Asian community would, of course, blame the blacks for the massive increase of these attacks. You know, no surprise there. Um, well, Oh yeah, that, that's fine. I just noticed something there. That's no worries. So it's gone to such a length regarding to these attacks. Follow them one second. The model minority stereotype has also masked the challenges that many, often lower income and Southeast Asians face. Some Asian Americans, often those who are more educated and wealthier, have benefited from key economic and cultural preferences. But that reality has also obscure how Asian American women, particularly those in service industries, have seen the highest rate of unemployment in the in, in the pandemic, with 44% out of work for six months or longer. I think there should be something. Well, anyway, that, that being said, let me just address this article right here. Asian and black communities aim to work together after high profile attacks, which I, I guess they are wanting to, I guess, blame the white folk for this. But again, we'll just have a look at this article here. Uh, Oakland, California, some members of the Asian and black communities are feeling under siege after a series of high profile robberies and assaults in Oakland and other parts of the Bay Area. And they're tr- sorry, excuse me. And they're trying to bridge the heart and work together in the aftermath. While some Asian Americans are feeling jeopardized by the brutal assaults and thieves or theft, sorry. There are black community members who feel like they're being racially profiled in the hunt to capture those responsible. Of course, of fucking course, they're, they they think they're being racially profiled, racially profiled because they're black. No, it's not be it's, it's it can't be because of the fact that you know there's a lot of people in the black community committing these acts, and maybe they should take some fucking responsibility within the communities. No, 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 no. no. Black people taking responsibility? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Are you racist? Of course not. It's it's all because of racial prejudice for the blacks. Get the fuck out of here. Is <sighs> of course it's never about maybe that as a community they should step aside and maybe take some responsibility and maybe work on on those issues. No, of course not. It's all because of. My, my blackness and because of my history my pro i wouldn't be surprised if they would throw in my slavery in there too because of course they'll fucking do that they always do that <clears throat> uh both communities have been victimized said oakland council member carol fife who is black of course and who is direct 
and whose district includes downtown and West Oakland. She she says, and there's a whole bunch of trauma on both sides, she said. Oakland is a tinderbox. As tensions mount, several groups have decided to work together instead of falling into stereotypes and blame, which I wouldn't be surprised if there's already that kind of blame anyway, because I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of animosity towards the communities also, because in fact, not, this isn't like a recent thing. This has been going on for many, many years, apparently. So this isn't like something that's brand new. Like, I, I, this is something that's been going on for ages now. In fact, I remember even seeing some videos a couple of years back where, you know, some people in the black community were racist towards the Hispanics. I mean, of course, they're racist towards the white people also. But the fact of the matter is they can also be racist towards, you know, us whites, Asians and also Hispanics. But with with the black community, they're always just brushed to the side and never been fully addressed. Like, oh, what's important is that, you know, black people... You know, are are being uh, victimized, and there and there's prejudice within the black community. Like, fuck off! How about they actually take some responsibility for their own fucking actions? Maybe just that. Maybe that's all what we're, what we're asking for. But but no, it's all because of ongoing uh, racial prejudice. Uh, I think there was another quote here. It says the tension between the Asian and black communities is building right now, and we cannot repeat history tweeted Michelle Kim of Oakland. Asians, we can fight anti-Asian racism without being anti-black or pro-police. Yeah, that, that's actually a quote I've noticed uh, or remember seeing. I was just like, wait, what? Asians, we can fight anti-Asian anti racism without being anti-black or pro-police. But wouldn't you want the police to help you out to be in with with that, but I, I just oh, but I, I was like, how 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 is it exact? How the fuck is it racist to be pro police? I mean, look, I, I think that the police are not exactly perfect to be on to be quite honest with you, especially here in the UK with these absolute draconian lockdown measures. It just, I think, it's complete. It, it's a absolute. Uh, just out of left, well, not out, out of left field, but just a complete uh, absurd idea that if you're pro police, then you're automatically racist, apparently. Which last time I checked, when it comes to police reports, whites get killed from uh, from police. Usually, white people are are more likely to die from police custody rather than than the blacks. And there's tons of evidence that you can see from statistics, from studies, and whatnot. There's plenty of evidence to back that up. But oh no, it's, it's all because of mass slavery. Jesus. Mm -mm. Throat was a little bit parched, but just drink of water there. Um, there's a follow-up to that here. Black folks, pe black folks, people condemn anti-Asian rhetoric within your own community and amplify our pain. It doesn't help, uh, Fife said, when some wealthy people have offered huge rewards on uh, for the arrest of certain suspects because it ends up putting bounties on black men's heads in search for the assailants. Oh, Jesus Christ. So basically, again, going back to what I was saying, instead of actually getting these, these, these absolute scumbags and have them be held accountable for their own actions. No, 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 we can't do that. Let, let's, let's, just, let's just hold each other's hands and sing fucking kumbaya all, all day. Jesus, who the fuck would want to live in California? It definitely sounds like a massive hellhole of a state. Which I know a lot of Americans are moving over to California, not California, sorry, I've said that, moving over to Texas. Um, but even then, I think Texas will be fucked if that's, if that's going to happen. Even though it's already happening, but you, you know what I mean. Uh, at the same time, some Asians feel not enough is being done to protect members of their own community. Some volunteers have st started pro pro patrolling the Chinatown streets themselves. Actor Daniel Wu, star of the show Into the Badlands or Badlands, spoke Monday at a news conference saying he was appalled at the crimes in Oakland's Chinatown. He and actor Daniel Day Kim have offered twenty-five thousand reward to some solve. Uh, so, solve some of the crimes. The attacks come at a time when there were already feelings of, of persecution in Asian neighborhoods. Wu said Asians have been unfairly blamed for the coronavirus as former President Trump, uh, of course we already covered that as well, using racially charged language often referring to it as the China flu. 
Each has been the targets of slurs and spat on, which Wu said he feels hasn't been reported on enough. Such fucking horseshit. I mean, let's kind of go over that. Two points I want to bring up with that, okay? The, the, the Chinese flu or the Asian flu or the, you know, Kung flu, if you want to call it. Look, the point of the matter is, look, whatever you want to call it, the coronavirus or whatnot, it's a, it's a God-given fact that this flu, this virus came from China, Wuhan to be exact, which I mentioned that because I think it's pertinent to mention that because I'm pretty sure everyone has noticed, uh, I think it was, no, I don't think it was earlier this week, but I think it was last week or the week before, uh, the World Health, the Chinese Health Organization, sorry, the World Health Organization, which is not Chinese, but by the way, have come out and said that the the coronavirus definitely 100% never came from Wuhan. Uh, so uh, apparently we're supposed to believe that the virus was not made in, in the Wuhan laboratory or anything like that. Uh, how convenient is that? That we've been going through this shit for like a year now, and all, and apparently we're supposed to believe, yeah, Wuhan, that that that's just fake news. <laughs> don't don't believe that for a second. Ridiculous. <clears throat> Oakland Council President Nikki Fortunato Bass, whose district includes Chinatown and the Lake Mera area, told KTVU this week that many members of the Chinese and Viet Vietnamese communities feel as though public safety isn't working for them. And there's a quote here saying, some communities are feeling over-policed, that's their truth, and others are feeling under-policed, that's their truth. Again, if you really want this all to be resolved, have the black community get together, get all these these perpetrators who commit the crimes, and have them be held accountable for their fucking actions. That is literally all you have to do. But instead of that, they don't want to do that because they don't want to be deemed as racist. Which, to me, when it comes to the topic of racism, right, with that stuff... We don't want to have them be held accountable and, and for their actions. Right. Let me ask, chat, if you're still watching, what, let me ask you this question right now, okay? What do you think is more racist? Having people um, being held accountable, especially when it comes to, to like joggers or the black community, have them actually be held accountable for their own actions, for what they've done, or have them not even giving them like a, a a slap on the wrist or anything like that because again they don't want to be deemed as racist or anything like that at all let me ask you this what's more racist well i'm, I'm pretty sure you all may know the answer of, of course uh let me see what's also said here bass said that the crimes against asians have been horrific and she also agreed that that she has seen anti-blackness on the rise because we live in a system rooted in white supremacy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so all, all these problems going on, it's not the communities themselves, it's white people. You know, it's, 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 the, it's the dreaded whole white people. And I'm, I'm sure fucking Yusuf Hamza, uh, Hamza Yusuf would completely agree with that uh, rhetoric. Jesus Christ. So basically, you want to prevent the problem by blaming on a group of people, which... Last time I checked, that doesn't prevent the problem. That actually creates even more problems because when you're putting the blame on a certain group of people, in this case, white people, and trying to demonize them and trying to say they're the problems within society, you're only just going to create even more problems. But, hey, I, I guess it's still a very popular thing to do to, to, to bash on white people, of course. Uh, let's see. And of course, this part here is all about the certain attacks that happen with some people. Uh, the Oakland side reported that it's not yet known for sure whether the Chinatown uptick in crime reflects a real change in longer standing patterns in Patrol Area 1, which encompasses Chinatown, West Oakland, and downtown. The overall number of reported crimes in January is down to 60% from last January, and robberies are down 40%, the Oakland side reported. However, Bass pointed out that these numbers might also never really be known. Uh, many Cantonese, Mandarin, and Vietnamese-speaking residents don't feel comfortable filing police reports and likely don't tell police about all the crimes they suffer. Uh, she said her staff has personally helped residents in her Chinatown district in the past. She said the city needs to do more to make these services 
accessible to Asian residents. And in a small way, bridges are all already being built. Several community groups are planning what they're calling a multiracial healing event with community groups from the Black, Latino, and Indigenous communities in Oakland and San Francisco this weekend. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to work out great. Like, I'm sure they're all going to get together. And, and, and everyone's going to be saying uh, kumbaya, and everything's going to be all fine, hunky-dory. I mean, again, there's never been any type of... of uh, any uh, tribalistic divide between the, the communities or anything like that at all. Nothing like that. I'm pretty sure it's all going to work out just fine. The Anti-Police Terror Project promoted a message from the Oakland Chinatown Coalition to support those living and working in that area by wearing yellow. Great. Uh, of course, there's certain tweets about this here. If you're pro not pro-Asian, you're if you are anti-black, you are not pro-Asian, you are misogynistic. <laughs> Sorry, uh, what? It is okay to disagree and have differences of opinion. It's not okay to threaten violence ever. Would it do better? Fuck Reddit. Uh, and that's pretty much it with regard to the article. So yeah, again, just more cringe from this absolute bullshit. I'll just close these just now. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Don't know what's going on with the same connection. But all right. Uh, the care pitch. <laughs> uh, oh my god, but again, there's just yeah, even Rob D healing effect for Fox. I know it's just again, I, I, I'm sure they're all gonna get together and everything's gonna be fine, no issues whatsoever. Uh, go and live in a, in a non white country, then well, you, th you think they would do that, but of, of course, like, why, why the fuck would they want to move across to either another country or even? their own uh, ancestral homeland. Like, why the fuck would they want to do that? Um, let me see. Just want to see what's also been said here. Oh, Ruffian, how you doing, sir? Thank you for watching the stream. Uh, let's see. Of course, hail Ruffian. Hail Ruffian, indeed. We shall... We shall... Well, shall we just agree that the USA is lost? Yeah, I, I, I would say it's pretty much lost. I mean... Especially that, uh, what I can tell, uh, in terms of the demographic change, I think it's going to be much earlier compared to here in the UK. Uh, for, uh, for those in the chat, is, is it correct to me saying that their demographic demographic change is somewhere in like the 2040s or somewhere like that? My, I might be completely blatantly wrong, but the last time I checked with the US, because of more Blacks and more Latinos, or more Hispanic people moved into the, the U.S., especially in California, uh, I would imagine that the demographic change would be much more uh, sooner rather than later in the U.S. rather than in the U.K., where it's estimated here in the U.K. it's going to be about 2066 or even uh, sooner. But yeah, I would agree that America is just lost at this point. I mean, you have Biden in office, who is a complete train wreck of a president. Even those who vote for for Biden, even though they they, they do not support him whatsoever, they just vote for him just because they want Trump out. They are they're just having complete regrets of voting from to begin with. But they will never ever say that. Oh, uh, well, maybe Trump was like the better president. Because again, look. Not a fan of Trump myself. He was definitely a disappointment. But the fact that they're, they're so arrogant to say that, uh, yeah, I mean, Biden is a horrible president, but at least he's not Trump. You know, it just really goes to show the complete arrogance of these people, honestly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sooner, yeah, even that. Yes, in the States, I think it's... 2020 no sorry 2044 jesus that's about if that is true that's definitely that's like what 20 23 years from now that's a lot of people may smugly say oh well that sounds like like further away but it's not that long if you really think about it if i even uh 2042 in the u.s so yeah it's around about in the 2040s but the main point is it's definitely it's really bad it's it's gonna be really bad in the u.s and I think the main culprit state-wise, I think, is definitely California. I mean, California is just an absolute cesspool of a state. And I know a lot of people are moving out of California, which, <laughs> I mean, they could do that if they want. And I know that a lot of people, as I mentioned earlier on, they're moving to, to Texas. But 
You can really say it at that, of course. Hey there, this is Chief Moody. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked this video, then you know what to do. Hit that like button, comment down below, share this video, and if you're new to the channel, maybe hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon for more content. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. This is Chief Moody signing out, and I will see you all next time. Take care.